Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here, coming to you from Studio A at theautomationschool.com. And in this episode of The Automation Show, we got some stuff from the good folks over at Wago to take a look at. Specifically, they've sent us in a power supply with IO-Link adapter. They sent us a, a PLC starter pack, this, this Ethernet IP adapter. Um, they sent us some terminal blocks and the labels and whatnot, and uh, a hat and a nice pen. But um, the biggest thing we're going to focus on today is going to be the uh, PLC. Uh, we'll unbox that, see what's in there, and then we'll take a close-up look at it and this Ethernet IP adapter and power supply. And then in the next video, we're going to try to get it all working, see if we can't figure it out. Now, I say that because I'm brand new to Wago and their PLCs and Ethernet adapters and whatnot. So this is going to be a learning experience for me. It may even be a learning experience for you as well. Now, if you're already a Wago expert, please let us know anything we do wrong or could do easier, because that's always helpful when you're starting out something new. As a matter of fact, that's why we do these videos and articles over at the blog, is to help new users uh, learn how to use this technology, this industrial automation technology. So with that said, let me go ahead and put the glasses on here, and we'll uh, use the overhead cam. Let me first move over some of these uh, stuff here, some of this stuff here, move this over there. And now let's see if I can zoom in and uh, we'll get a closer look. Let's see if we can get the part number. In case you want to get one of these yourself, let's see if we can find the part number. All right, you can see that part number is kind of hard to see. And that's really not the one I want to show you. Let me pull up on the screen the one that uh, you'll typically want to get if you want to get into using the Waco PLCs. And this is the 8003-099. Okay, and I'll put a link in the description as well. And that comes with the PFC 100 controller, the supply module, the uh, two-channel digital in, two-channel digital out, the end module, a uh, one-amp power supply, a uh, switching module that's that two-way uh, digital input simulator, uh, a license for the e-cockpit development software, a uh, USB cable, micro SD card, and screwdrivers. So that would be the one you want. Uh, this one's a little bit different because um, they opened up the box and they upgraded the uh, kit for me. So I would be able to do more lessons here, but you really don't need the upgrades just to get started. So with that said, let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit here. And uh, since it's already been open, we won't have to struggle with that. So we just have to find where it opens. Looks like it opens right here. Let me move the sky out of the way. Okay, here we go. Take out the packaging. And let's see what we got here. All right, well, we start out with a great, I love it when the guys do this, when manufacturers put in uh, screwdrivers into their uh, stuff so it makes it easy to, you know, to put the terminals on their product. Um, this looks like some, uh, wow, looks like they gave us some. Uh, this is all in German, maybe? Okay, well, we'll open that in a minute. Okay, here's power. That's great. We already got some uh, power for the demo. We can plug it right into the wall. That's good. This looks like a license. Okay, for the programming software, I'd imagine. Uh, this looks like a Ethernet cable. Just looks like a standard Ethernet cable to me. That's what it says on this side. Okay. It's nice starter kits that give you everything you need to get going. All right, looks like this, it would be a programming cable, right? It says conf cable. It's USB on one side. And then what's the connector here? It looks like it plugs into the PLC. So we'll open that in a minute. Then we'll pull this PLC out. Let's put the box over here. Okay, at this point, let me run you through everything that comes on this board that was inside of that box. We start off with our uh, one amp power supply. That's the 787 1602 and then we have the controller itself now again i have the 750 8212 okay so that's a little bit uh higher end than what comes in the standard starter kit um you can see it has a couple ethernet ports it has an rs232 45 port and directly to the right of that is this module here this is the 75602 this is the supply module this is where you bring power in to supply your field power to your modules here to the right. And uh, the first one on the right is the 400. Now the 400 
is a two digital input module. You can see zero and one right there. And then the 501, that is a two digital output module. Okay, these are both 24 volts DC. Now this you won't find in the standard starter kit. This is something that they added in for me to use with a bunch of sensors we are getting. And uh, this is a IO-Link master. Now you can connect into it regular sensors or you can connect in IO-Link sensors and get a bunch of additional information. Look forward to trying that out. Uh, the great people at Wago hooked me up with the guys over at PNF. So um, hopefully when those come in, we'll be able to test that out. Now on the far right, and this is what you'll find at the right side of every one of these layouts, is what they call their end module. So it just terminates the bus there at the end. Okay, and then this little guy here, this is a little uh, digital input simulator. You can do on, off, okay? Or you can do momentary by pushing it down. It's pretty cool. And we get the wires that come in there. Okay, let's take a look at commissioning here. Step one, they want us to wire the starter kit. You can see the wiring here. Step two, they want us to set the IP address via the dip switch here. They want 367 on, and that corresponds to 192.168.1.100. Now step three, they want us to set the mode switch to run. Okay. Step four, they want us to plug in the memory card. Step five, they want us to plug in the power. Step six, they want us to connect the field bus controller to our PC via the patch cable provided. And then step seven, they want us to call up the web visualization in our browser by typing in 192.168.1.100 forward slash web visu slash web visu dot Okay, so this is all the stuff we can try. It's in German, I believe. Um, with this starter pack. But, you know, the first step we have here is wiring the starter kit. And they show us um, how to wire this in the diagram. I'll throw that on the screen here. But it's fairly easy. So let me go ahead and do that, and I'll speed up the video while I, while I wire it up. And then here we can see a description of each step. Wire the starter kit, which we've already done. Set the IP address with the dip switches. Now we can't do that because this is not an 8100. This is an 8200, so there are no dip switches. Step three, set the mode selected to run. Well, we can do that. Step four, plug in the memory card. Now the memory card we received was a micro SD. And uh, this particular model is a 8200 series. So it takes a standard SD, but I had here lying around the office a standard SanDisk converter, so we'll put the micro SD in that, and then we will put it inside of the controller. And connect the field bus controller to your PC. So we have both Ethernet and USB that we can use here. And the final step it says here is call up the web visualization in the browser using that IP address. And again, because the model I have is slightly different, um, what we're going to see is going to be a little different here. So now let's go ahead and plug it in. Wait for it to boot up. Okay, while it's booting up, let's test these uh, inputs. Yeah, first one works. Second one works, that's great. So now let's go over to the computer here. And I will plug the USB cord into my VMware virtual machine. Let's see what happens. Okay, here we can see it says it's setting up the Wago USB service cable. And now it says the Wago USB service cable is set up and ready to go. 
Okay, but nothing's coming up. So let me plug it into the Ethernet network using the patch cable. All right, and now on the other screen here, I'll pull up my router to see what address it gets. I'm assuming it's set up for DHCP. Okay, it looks like uh, address 27. So let me open up a browser here. And let's put in that address here, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. It's okay. Go to the web page. And here we are, we're connected to the unit. All right, looks good. Now, if we look back at the instructions, okay, now they want us to go to an address, WebVisu, W-E-B-V-I-S-U, slash, Web .htm, I believe. Yep. And apparently there's something else I have to do there to finish those uh, steps. So we'll come back to that later. But what we were able to do is we were able to wire it up and then use the switches here to test the inputs. Okay, again, mine was a little different than the one in the instructions because they upgraded the processor for me. So, uh, so I could do some other things. And I think we'll leave the show right there. There's so much left to do. We have to redeem our license and then write our very first Wago PLC program. Then we have that remote rack of Ethernet I.O. we can use. Um, we also have that I.O. link module and we'll be able to connect up to the power supply using the I.O. link uh, module that they sent with the power supply. Um, they also hooked us up with uh, PNF. So we got some PNF uh, sensors coming in to use over I.O. link. And uh, just so much to do. So a huge thank you to Wago for sending it in. Look forward to having additional shows on the Wago equipment that they have sent. And um, just want to thank all our patrons who help keep the show and the blog going. Uh, appreciate all your support over at patreon.com forward slash automation. Depending on the pledge level, they get the entire season of the automation show for free. They get free downloads. They get ad-free access to the website and more. Uh, with that said, I also want to pitch my full-time job, theautomationschool.com. If you know anybody looking for compact logics, control logics, micro logics, micro 100, PNW Plus, or VUSC training. Now's a great time to purchase those courses. Not only that, the summer's are usually a little slow for online training, so we could really use your business, but also we have a sale going on. And if you buy the courses today, you're going to get the updates for free in the future. So keep that in mind. That's what I've been spending most of my days doing is uh, doing all the preliminary work to upgrade all those courses with new lessons. And we got new stuff coming out. So, um, if you know anybody looking for training, please send them over there. We also do do group enrollment for businesses, so keep that in mind. That's actually where most of our business come, even though we still love the, the individuals who buy our training. Um, but with that, if you have any questions on that, you can contact me over there at theautomationschool.com. And with that, I just want to thank you for watching. Thank you for helping us break 11,000 subscribers. So very cool. And until next time, my friends, peace.